treatment, so these are diaper seeds, green seeds. Then we learn that in bean seeds, we will find the seed coat. Okay, it's a kidney seed structure, you can see over here. It's a kidney seed structure, alright, with the convex side and the concave side. No more the point. Number three point, we will go through the seed coat. So, the outermost covering, okay, the outermost covering of the seed coat is called the testa. So, this is the outermost covering. So, this outermost covering of the seed coat is called the testa. T E S T A. You can see over here also testa. Okay. So, this outermost covering is called the testa. And the inner lining over here, this is over here, is the so, yeah, so these are the two covering of a seat or that is seat coat. Testa, the autonomous covering, brown is one, which put it in nature, and the inner lining need to test as the tape. So you can see over here, testa and tape. Clear this one? Okay. So first what you learn, which are diaper seat with two bottle linen, the see uh, the same is kidney set with both the convex side and the concave sides. The sheet coat, the outermost covering is called the testa, and next to testa, the innermost covering is called the tendon. Okay, yes, we will come to that afterwards. Okay, now next one, the learning of the, the learning of the microbiome. Okay, yes, so this part is the helium, and this part is the microbiome. I have explained for you. So let's see the next part, the helium and the microbiome. So remember, this part is the convex part and convex side and this part is the concave side. Okay, so helium, next up and remember, helium is a distinct whitish oval scatter on the concave side of the seed. That means this part. Can you see over here on the concave side, white can spread in. So this part, okay, this was small white square part which is present on the concave side of the seed is called the helium, H I. L U and helium. So that part is the helium. Okay. Now so this helium will represent the place where the ovule was attached to the ovary wall through the placenta. So helium will represent the sites where the ovule was attached to the ovary wall. So this part is the helium where the ovule was attached to the ovary wall. And just above the helium, just look over there, the small tiny port. Can you see? You can see it the small tiny pore above the helium. Just above the helium, a small tiny pore is present. That tiny pore is called micropile. Okay, that small tiny pore just above the helium is called the micropile. So, micro is this tiny pore situated close to the helium. It marks the opening through which the pollen to enter the ovule. So, pollen tube will enter the ovule to the help of microbiome. But there are certain functions of microbiome, what are they? So before that, remember the structure. So, on the concave side, we will find a small white scar, right? The white scar is called the helium. It will be the spot where the ovule was attached to the ovary wall, to the placenta. And just of the helium, we will find a small tiny pore, which is called the microbiome, to which the pollen tube enters the ovule. Now, what are the two functions of the microbiome? Okay, the microbiome mainly serves two functions. First function of microbiome is that when soaked in water, so when we have to keep the seed in water, the seed adjusts the water, we know that. So when we have to keep the seed in the water, we know that the seed will absorb the water. So the seed will absorb the water mainly through this microbiome. And make it available to the embryo for germination. So when you to keep the seed in all water, the seed will absorb the water. So the seeds are able to absorb the water through the microbiome. And this water will be available to the embryo for germination. Second function of microbiome is that it provides for the diffusion of respiratory gases for the growing embryo. So gases will be diffused in and out by the help of Microbiome. So these are the two general functions of the microbiome. The next one, cotyledons. We know that there are two cotyledons in case of a bean seed. So they are 
die or t leadiness. So now we will see the type of quadrilateral. Okay, we we'll talk about quadrilateral. So when we used to remove, or when we used to go for the cross section of a beach, is very very carefully. All right, we will find that it's made up of two quadrilaterals. So below the sheet go to the quadrilaterals which contain the food for the embryo and protein it is present. So just below the sheet go. All right. So when we used to remove the Seed code will find the presence of cotyledon. This cotyledon will store the food materials for the developing embryo. You can see over here the part of the embryo is growing a tiny plant. Alright. So this cotyledon will store the food materials for the developing embryo. Now, embryo. So when two cotyledons are separated, so when we have to remove the two cotyledons, tiny embryo can be attached to one of the cotyledons. So when we used to remove the cotyledons very, very carefully, then we will see the presence of an embryo on one of the cotyledons. So you can see over here, this is the intact bean seeds, alright? So when we remove the outer covering test car and remove the tech we will find the presence of cotyledon. And when we used to remove the cotyledon, alright? When we used to remove the cotyledon, we will see the presence of embryo, but embryo will be present on one of the cotyledon. So when we remove the cotyledon, we will find the presence of tiny embryo on one of the cotyledon. Remember, on one of the cotyledon. Then, this embryo, it consists of two parts, radical and period. Can you remember? Alright? Embryo, mainly consists of two components radical you can show it also radical and human radical and human they form the embryo now we will see which part is radical and which part is human so over you can see the two cotyledons and over here you can see the tiny embryo in fact this embryo will be present on one of the cotyledons so now here we will see the radical and the human okay so this particular part which you can see over here this one is the plumule, P L U N U L plumule. It forms the future suit of the plant. Okay, and this one which you are seeing, this is the radical. Radical forms the future root of the plant. So embryo, it will consist of two parts: plumule part, which forms the future suit of the plant, and the radical part, which forms the future root of the plant. Clear? Okay. Now. Embryo, we just learned that, we learned about radical and the uh, We have seen that which part is radical and which part is pinwheel and what are they going to form during the germination. Here, yes, radical from the future root and pinwheel from the future soon. Now, next term you remember is epipotal and hypopotal. Now, which one is epipotal and which one is hypopotal? Here, yeah. so here you can see the pinwheel part. The future suit and radical part, the future root. Can you remember? Okay, so this one is the radical part. Sorry, this one is the radical part. R A D I C radical, which form the future root. And here you can see this part. Okay, here you can see the plumule part, which form the future suit. And these are the cotyledon part, which is the food materials for the developing embryo. Now we have to see which part is the epicotal part and which part is the hypocotal part. So before going into the epicotal part and the hypocotal part, you have to identify the plural part and the radical part. Only then you can remember which one is epicotal and which one is hypocotal. Clear? So first of all, try to identify which one is plural, which one is radical. Plural, you identify plus it will form the future suit of the part. So it is a part of immature leaf. Clear? Then radical, a potted part, which form the future root. Then only we can identify which one is hypocotyl and which one is epicotyl. So, epicotyl means region of axis between the point of attachment of cotyledon and the plumule. That means the point of contact or the point of attachment between the cotyledon and the plumule. Remember carefully, the point of attachment or the axis where the cotyledon and the plumule will be in contact. 
okay or will be attachment that is known as ep cotta so this parallel portion the point of contact between the cleavable and the cotyledon so this particular part is called the ep cotta and the region of axis below the cotyledon or below the ep cotta is called the hypo cotta that means the point of contact between the radical and the cotyledon this part is called the hypo cotta which will appear for you later this particular diagram will make a clear understanding for you clear yeah. so look over very very carefully which one is epicotyl part and which one is hypocotyl part so this one is the cleavable part and this part over here this one is cleavable part clear and this one is radical part now identify which one is epicotyl and which one is hypocotyl so ep cotta is the axis or the point of contact or the attachment between cotyledon and cleavable so this one is cleavable and here you can see the cotyledon part so this particular part is known as ep cotta and the point of contact contact between the radical and the cotyledon just below the ep cotta this particular region is called the hypo cotta so ep cotta is the point of attachment between the cotyledon and the cleavable and hypo cotta is the axis between the attachment the attachment of radical and the cotyledon just below the ep cotta clear so we have those points clear so we have gone through radical we have gone through cleavable we have also learned which one is ep cotta and which one is hypo cotta or we can say उटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेटेट
The inverse form and the inverse part are separated from each other by epithelial layer. Keep this in mind that the inverse form and the inverse layer they are separated from one another by the help of epithelial layer. Now this will disperse by the help of the diagram. So now when we look into the diagram, that is one clear for you. Because the image green, and you know why I am calling it image green. Because over here the football and the seat wall will form a single protective layer. So thoughts of fruits will be known as a green. Okay. So this uh, is a monocular seat on a single cotyledon. We learn that on one part of the green it is mainly composed of inverting part. This one is the inverting part. So image green. This particular part is the Inverting part and this particular part, which you can see over here, is the inverse form part or inverse form. So, this part is the inverse form part, this part is the inverting part. These two parts are separated from one another by a thin, can you see over here? By a thin epithelial layer. So, this particular layer is called the epithelial layer or epithelium. So epithelium or the epithelial layer will separate the endosperming part and the inverting part of the body leading by the next grain. Clear? Okay. Now, next one. The outermost layer, let me carefully, the outermost layer of the endosperm is rich in protein and is called the Aeron layer. So look over here in the diagram. So this one is the inverting part, this one is the inverse form part, this is the epithelium or the epithelial layer that separates inverse form and the inverting part. Clear? So this outer layer of the inverse form, which you can see, this outer layer, as you can see over here, this outer layer of the inverse form is rich in protein. So therefore, this outer layer of the inverse form is called the Aeron layer, this layer, Aeron layer, so you go here. So this layer, we are talking about this layer, okay, we are talking about this particular layer. So this layer of the inverse form is rich in protein, okay. So this rich, produces layer of the inverse form is known as Aeron layer. Now, embryo consists of single cotyledon. We know that mesh brain is monocotyledonous, is composed of a single cotyledon. So, over here, in case of mesh brain, the single cotyledon is known as scutel. Alright? Mesh brain is a monocotyledonous seed and is known as single scutelon with radical, the future root of the plant and premium, the future suit of the plant. Radical is towards the pointed end and is enclosed in a protective sheath or the cover called polyorhiza. We will walk carefully. In case of dicotyl, we have got about hypocotyl and epicotyl in dicotyl. But in case of monocotyl, you have to remember the term polyorhiza and polyoctyl. So radical is toward the pointed sides of the grain. That means this is the pointed part. Okay, this is the pointed part of the grain. So radical is toward the pointed part of the grain, you can say, for the pointed end, and it is covered in a seed. And that name of the seed is called polyorhiza. Whereas plenum is toward the upper broader part. This upper broader part will find the plenum and is enclosed in a protective seed for the polyoctyl. Now we will go in detail which one is polyoctyl and which one is polyorhiza. So look over here. So this one is the broad, uh, this one is the pointed part or the pointed end of the mesh grain. So in this part we will find the radical and radical is enclosed in a protective seed which is called the polyorhiza. And in the broad end, this end, we will find the plenum, the future suit of the plant. And this plume is also enclosed in a protected seed, which is called the polyoctyl. Here, so monocot seed, we are talking about the mesh grain, the monocot seed comes a single cotyledon with a scutinum and it contains radical and plumin. So radical and plumin is the inverting part. 
clear? Primary is enclosed in a sheet called the polyptide and radical in a sheet called the polyorhiza. Polyptide and polyorhiza. Primary future shoots, radical the future root of the plant. Clear? Now we also got that in our major grain. One part we will find the presence of the inorganic part and on the other part we will find the endosperm. Endosperm is rich in food materials. The outer part of the endosperm is rich in protein and called the animal layer. The endospermic part and the inorganic part are separated from each other by the help of epithelial layer or epithelium. Clear? So today we have learned about the structure of mono cotton seed and the diaper seeds by taking the example of bean seed which is a diaper seed and the maize grain which is a mono plant. Clear? So kindly go through it, kindly go through the structure of the bean seeds and the mono cotton seeds from here. This so in the next class we will talk about germination. Thank you and see you in the next class.